Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my updated Ching Cho guide. In this video, we're gonna be talking about one of the strongest four star supports who basically everyone should use if they have them. Ching Cho's a character I didn't use for a few months at the start of the game, and then when I started using him, I quickly realized how broken he is, especially because of his insanely fast hydro application, just enabling your carries to constantly proc reactions. So, in this video, I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about Ching Cho in as much detail as possible without taking too much time. Also, in case you're wondering, I'm making an updated Ching Cho guide because my last one is almost six months old, and so there's a lot of additional information that I'd like to add and a lot has changed especially regarding team comps, how much energy recharge you need, and a lot of new weapons like the Jade Cutter. So with that out of the way, I want you guys to know that I stream most nights on Twitch, link in the description if you're interested. Be sure to sub if you're new because it means a lot and let's get right into it. The first thing I want to do in this video is actually talk about why Xing Chu is such a broken character and why I believe he's one of the strongest supports in Genshin. First of all, if you don't know, he applies Hydro very very fast. His Rain Swords have a very high scaling and get a lot better with Constellations and so if you can have them up all the time, not only do they deal a ton of damage, if you invest into him, but even at very low investment, he will just apply Hydro very fast, which enables a lot of other characters like your Pyro carries to vaporize on every single hit. What I mean by that is that even if your Xing Cho has basically no artifacts or just energy recharge, him being able to apply Hydro so fast enables characters like Hu Tao, Deluke, or Shang Ling to vaporize constantly and increase their damage by spamming reactions. If that's not good enough, as I mentioned, he also has insanely high scaling, so if you do invest into him, he gets a lot, a lot better. He's also a 4-star character whose best weapon is also a 4-star weapon, making him pretty accessible, and he's also very good in many different team comps, making him just a good character overall. With that out of the way, I want to talk about his talents and some general tips regarding how to play him before we break down his best builds. First of all, his elemental skill is just an ability that does two strikes, so it basically slashes twice and does a pretty good amount of damage. As you can see, the skill damage on it at only level 9, while 6 plus constellations, uh, is already very high, and it does also give you some rain swords. As you can see, this ability creates rain swords, which will reduce your damage taken and also heal you a bit with the help of your other talent. Also, I feel like I should mention that using your E uh, does make you wet, but it's only a one-time thing and it's really not that big of a deal. It can just be a slight inconvenience if you're trying like not to get frozen. Overall, Overall though, you mainly just use this ability for the high scaling and the insane amount of particles that it generates, being 4 to 5 on every cast, so an average of 4.5. As you guys can see, just pressing E on him makes a ton of particles fly towards you, and if you have Sacrificial Sword, you can do that twice to allow you to get your burst back on cooldown. What I mean by that is that your burst is the main reason why you play Xing Cho. It's just an insanely powerful ability that does, however, have a very high energy cost. The energy cost of 80 can make it hard to get your burst back, but if you are running him on a sacrificial sword, which we'll talk about in the weapon section, or if you're just running enough energy recharge on your stats, on your artifacts, you can manage to easily get this burst back on cooldown, allowing you to constantly apply hydro and deal a lot of damage. If you don't know what this burst does, uh, I'll explain it. Basically, this rain cutter just deals a ton of damage and applies hydro very fast. It does that by applying a bunch of swords on your hits. So when you do a normal attack on whichever active character you're using, it will trigger those sword attacks, which does hydro damage to the opponents. Something to keep in mind is that the scaling is good. It's 103% on every sword and you do two to three swords on every hit. In fact, it alternates between two and three, so an average of 2.5 swords per normal attack, and you can proc this effect every single second. In case my explanation wasn't clear, to show you guys what I mean, uh, when you do one attack, it'll apply those two swords. You saw two instances of damage, then you attack again, it'll do three, and then it'll repeat two, three, two, three, two, three. Now, if you are Constellation 6, which we'll talk about later, it actually does even more damage. You get even more scalings because your third hit will actually do five swords. As you can see, my next one does five there. So at Constellation 6, it alternates from two, to three to five swords uh, and for the rest of Shinkro players like at constellation anything under six uh, you'll alternate between two and three and so while this 103 percent scaling might not seem like much given the fact that it's 103 percent on every single sword and how many swords you can generate and use this ability does an insane amount of damage if you do invest in your Xing Cho. on top of that as you can see the uptime is pretty great if you can manage the energy cost because it has a 15 second duration with a 20 second cooldown on top of that if you do have your constellation two the duration of your burst is actually increased by three seconds which which is pretty insane. Lastly, for your passive talents, uh, we saw this one that just heals you with your rain swords. And then your second passive talent that you get when you ascend uh, this character past level 60, so 60 out of 70, gives you 20% hydro damage bonus, which is really good. For your talent priority, you should focus on your burst always because this is what's dealing the most damage. And then you can level your elemental skill after that, which increases damage and the damage reduction uh, that it gives you, although that's not too important. Uh, and then you don't have to worry about leveling your normal attacks as a support character. 
So now there's a couple of more advanced things that I want to show you guys. First of all, regarding running a pyro character with Xing Cho is just usually the best way to go. Uh, I've talked about this in a few other videos, so I'm just going to do this very briefly. But if you're running Diluc with like a melt uh, character, right? If you're attacking nonstop, you apply pyro too fast to where you can't melt every hit, as you can see, and it ends up being your like Kaya who is the one melting. That being said, if you're running Xing Cho just off his rain swords, you are able to melt every hit. Now he dug away, so that was kind of a bad example, but as you can see, every single E I do will vaporize. And even if I use my burst, me uh, spamming my autos won't like remove the hydro element from the Vish app. What I mean by that is if I use my burst together, right? Uh, this hit will vaporize. And then if I'm just doing autos, like let's say two autos into an E or whatever you do on Diluc, uh, I'm still like the hydro element is still on the Vish app, which means I'm still vaporizing uh, anytime my, my internal cooldown is up anytime I can vaporize. And obviously the same thing is uh, applicable to Hu Tao who can vaporize on every hit uh, with this uh, with Xing Chu. Another tip I want to give you guys is actually concerning when you should use your E and your Qs basically. Uh, if your alt is already ready something you can do is you can press E and then use your Q and then use your second E which is from the Sack Sword. And then you can see I basically have my burst up already while my burst is active, which allows me to have 100% uptime on it. Now, keep in mind, uh, and we're going to talk about constellations in a bit, but if you do have his C4, I believe, this increases the damage of your skill when your burst is active. So if you do want to maximize your damage, you can use your skill after your burst. But generally speaking, I recommend uh, doing one E, then a Q while the particles travel to you, and then your second E with a Sack Sword. Lastly, one more thing I'd like to mention is that you usually want to make sure you're picking your particles up on Xing Cho, especially if you're not running like an excessive amount of energy recharge. Because if you were to press E and then just swap, you'd get like a lot less energy than if you were to catch them on Xing Cho himself, which can make it a lot more difficult to get your burst back on cooldown. And since you want to try to maximize like your bursts uptime, it's very important for you to actually catch the particles on your Xing Cho before you swap characters. Now let's talk about Xing Cho's weapons, and we're actually going to cover this before we get into the artifact section in this video because of how much your artifacts can vary based on your weapon and the importance of certain weapons like Sacrificial Sword. So first of all, I want to clear up some misconceptions around his weapons and really talk about which ones are the best in which scenarios. Now it has become common knowledge that Sacrificial Sword is Xing Cho's best weapon, and it is what I recommend to most people. Sacrificial Sword, even at Refinement 1, is amazing because it lets you use your E twice, and it gives you a ton of energy recharge as like a main stat. So that energy recharge that paired with the effect is insane, especially because of how long his skill cooldown is as we saw earlier. This 21 second cooldown is really long and so having two charges of it is really nice. On top of that, since your elemental skill hits uh, twice and can hit multiple enemies, every hit of it has a chance to proc the sacrificial sword. What I mean by that is that both of these hits, as you can see, there's one and then two, like there are two numbers, each of them has a chance to proc sac sword. So even if you are low refinement, you effectively have twice the chance to proc this effect. Uh, and against multiple enemies, you can hit more than twice, you know, if you hit a few enemies at once, making it pretty likely to proc this effect. And we'll talk about it more in detail in the artifact section. Running a sacrificial sword actually lets you run an attack percent sans because you really don't need that much additional energy recharge from what it gives you, greatly increasing your damage. That being said, I do want to talk about Jade Cutter very briefly. If you do have it and aren't using it on another sword user, it can actually be your best in slot if you are very high invested in your Xing Cho. If you have like an energy recharge sans and good substats, the insane amount of crit rate that Jade Cutter gives you can make it its best in slot, but only at high investment. And so I still generally recommend sacrificial sword for most people. In terms of other viable options for like a free to play or whatever, a Festering Desire is the best free to play sword if you did get it during the event. And other good options include Favonia Sword, giving you a lot of particles uh, and a very high energy recharge stat, which can be a pretty good replacement if you don't have a Sack Sword or if you do need those white particles. And lastly, Skyward Blade, which has high energy recharge and a much higher base attack than something like a Sacrificial Sword. Uh, keep in mind, mine is only level 80, but still a higher base attack with a high energy recharge stat can be a good option, but it's usually worse than Sack Sword because this gives you two charges and allows you to build a lot less ER on your artifacts. Furthermore, Sacrificial Sword scales very well with the refinements, and so the more you have, the better it gets from a lot of the other swords. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about Xing Cho's artifacts, the best sets and the best uh, stats that you want on him. For the artifact sets, it's pretty straightforward. Two Noblesse Oblige with two piece Heart of Depth is usually just the way to go because you get 20% elemental burst damage and 15% hydro damage uh, to just your whole kit. 
That being said, you can, especially on a low investment build, you can run something like a four piece Noblesse Oblige. If you don't have anyone else in your team that runs this set, just to give your whole party members 20% attack while still getting that 20% burst damage. That being said, I would highly recommend running Noblesse on someone like Bennett or Diona instead of your Xingqiu so that you can maximize his damage by giving him the two piece Heart of Depth as well. Lastly, I do want to add that if a new artifact set comes out, because there's a lot of speculation that there might be with Inazuma, I won't make a whole nother guide, but I'll make a separate video talking about its strength on every character, and I'll make a pinned comment on this video regarding its strength for Xingqiu if it does come out. Now let's move on to Xingqiu's artifact stats. What do you actually want to build on all of his artifacts? First of all, let me say that you generally want to prioritize energy recharge until you have enough, and we'll talk about how much you need in a little, but you want to first of all have enough energy recharge and then focus on giving him more damage by focusing on his crit rate and his crit damage. Those are the substats you want on most pieces, and as you guys know, Xingqiu is a great hydro applier, right? He's a very good support to help, let's say, pyro DPS. So even if he's on very, very low investment, as long as you can use your burst on cooldown, you will be efficient, even if you're not dealing a lot of damage. That being said, and as I mentioned in the intro, he is a character who scales very well on investment, so if you can, give him just enough energy recharge as he needs while focusing on maximizing his crit, you will uh, get a lot of value out of his damage. So with that being said, what does that look like? Well, on your sands, you're either going to go attack percent or energy recharge. However, attack percent will give you a lot more damage, and it's what you should be running, especially if you have a weapon like Sacrificial Sword. If you're running Sac Sword, you tend to only need about 180 to 200 energy recharge, and it can be more or less depending on your refinement, but around 180 to 200 is a good general guide. So if you have enough energy recharge on your substats, and it can seem hard, but like... If you do have a Sacrificial Sword that's leveled and that already gives you a bunch of ER, you really don't need that much more from substats. As you can see, personally, I gained 29, which might seem like a lot, but it's generally like one or two pieces that have a lot of ER. Personally, I have a Lucky Goblet with a lot of energy recharge, but basically none of my other pieces have ER rolls except 5% on my Feather. So once you have enough energy recharge on your Xingqiu, you can just focus on giving him as much damage as possible. With that being said, if you're running a weapon that isn't Sacrificial Sword, uh, let's say something like a Jade Cutter, energy recharge on the Sands can be better. Overall, Although, with enough ER, I recommend attack percent on the Sands, a Hydro damage bonus on the Goblet, and crit rate or crit damage on the Circlet. And so while my stats and especially my crit ratio could be better, right? I only have like 60 crit rate. I do have enough energy recharge to where in every rotation, I'll have my burst back on cooldown. I just need to like press my E twice, catch the particles, and then I can use my burst when it's up. For Xingqiu's constellations, he's good even at C0 because of all the things I mentioned earlier in the video. However, he does have some of the best constellations in the game that will greatly improve your character. That being said, his C1 is not one of his good ones because all it does is increase your rain swords by one. And keep in mind, this is only the swords that rotate around you that sort of heal you a bit and uh, decrease the damage you take. So C1 basically just makes you tankier but doesn't actually increase your damage. So it's important not to confuse what a rain sword is with uh, like the swords that your burst generates uh, with the rain cutter. That being said, his second constellation is absolutely amazing, decreasing the hydro resistance of enemies and extending the duration of your rain cutter, which is your burst. Your C3 increases your burst level by 3, which is great. And then your C4 and 5 both increase the damage of your skill, uh, 4 being only after you use your burst. And lastly, his Constellation 6 is his best constellation pretty much by far. It's just insane. It gives you more damage by giving you more of like the Rain Cutter Swords, which will now rotate from 2 swords to 3 swords to 5 swords, significantly increasing your damage. On top of that, it does also give you some energy, but it's not as much as it says. As I mentioned in my last video, it is like mistranslated to where it only gives you energy every 3 hits. So every time you do the 5 sword hit, you will generate three energy. Overall though, even with that uh, detail, this is still an amazing constellation, definitely Xingqiu's best, and overall all of his constellations are very powerful. Now we're going to get into one of the most important sections, which is the team comps. Luckily for Xingqiu, he fits basically every team, but since he's so valuable to certain characters, I usually recommend running him in whichever of your team comps that needs him the most. Let's say you're running, you know, two teams for Abyss. However, since his scalings are so high, he can basically fit like almost any team. With that being said, let's talk about teams where he shines exceptionally well as a powerful Hydro Applier and Burst Support. So first of all, it's no surprise to anybody that I highly recommend playing Xing Cho in Pyro teams. I personally don't believe that a lot of the Pyro characters that are good, right? So Deluc, uh, Hu Tao, and even Shang Ling would be nearly this good if they couldn't reliably vaporize. While Shang Ling can use someone like Child to constantly vaporize, characters like Deluc and Hu Tao don't really have comparable options to Xing Cho to constantly vaporize every single hit. And while you can technically run melt teams with pyro characters, the damage you're going to be dealing is a lot lower than if you were to spam reverse vaporize because of how fast Xing Cho applies hydro, allowing you to vape literally every single hit. So because of that, if you're running a pyro character like Hu Tao or Deluc, I always recommend running them with Xing Cho. On top of that, he enables powerful teams like this one, which is a Beidou uh, DPS 
DPS team. And I know a lot of people still think Beto can only be played as a support, but she is actually a very powerful DPS who can spam Electro Charged with Xing Cho. All these characters here work very well together, and Xing Cho enables you to spam Electro Charged constantly on any enemy you're fighting. On top of that, he's essential in freeze comps. So a team like this, where you're constantly freezing every enemy with Kaya who applies cryo very fast and you know another cryo character like Rosaria, uh, who's right here, or even Chong Yun, can allow you to constantly apply cryo and then Xing Cho will be the one who applies that hydro element to freeze the enemies. Without him, this team wouldn't work basically at all because having a fast hydro applier like Xing Cho is very important for this team. Furthermore, Xing Cho is the best support in a lot of team comps that just want good off-field supports. So for example, if you have the option to use him, like if he's not being occupied in another team, running Xing Cho with like Razor or even Kaching, who don't particularly need to proc specific reactions, can really benefit from just the insane amount of off-field damage that Xing Chou provides alongside the Electro Charge reaction. For example, this is widely regarded to be one of Razor's best like four star teams because you have everything that Razor wants. Strong off field supports with Fischl and Xing Chou, Diona to proc superconduct, and Xing Chou gives you that Electro Charge constantly and just a ton of off field damage. So while Xing Chou's teams are very flexible and you can basically fit him in any team, I highly recommend playing him in whichever team you're running that needs him the most. So as I said, comps that wouldn't work without him, like a Freeze team with Kaya or a uh, Vaporize team like a Pyro carry like Deluke or even Shang Ling, are the teams that should take your Xing Chou slot, whereas the other team uh, that might still want him can maybe find a a replacement with another off-field support. And I feel like this is a good place to talk about how broken he is. Xing Zhou is actually such a useful resource and such an important part in so many top tier teams that oftentimes when a new pyro character is released that also needs Xing Zhou, the fact that their pyro is usually not even an advantage because they need such a high valuable support that your other DPS might need. And so it can oftentimes be difficult for people to make like two pyro teams, right? Let's say Diluc and Hu Tao because you only have one Xing Zhou. So overall, I can't stress enough how powerful Xing Zhou is. In my personal tier list, he's one of the highest characters on on the list because of how versatile and essential he is for many different team comps. And I hope in this video I, I helped you guys build him and play him properly and I feel like it was about time to release a new Xing Chou guide because the last one is pretty old and there's a lot of new information that I wanted to convey in this video. Once again if anything changes, especially with Inazuma, if anything new comes out I will update it in a pinned comment and as always review all the new things as they come out. If you have any questions be sure to leave them in the comments because I read most of them or join the discord we have a very helpful community that I'm very active in that also answers most questions. With that being said I hope if you enjoyed the video feel free to subscribe if you want to and with that being said i'll catch you guys in the next one peace and lastly his biggest strength is that he actually does refund talent books for you